Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here, and I have a great video for you today. I'm gonna break down mob slang, whether it's movies or in real life, and I'm gonna tell you what I know about that. But before I get started, please check me out on Patreon. Please check me out on the YouTube member programs and Cameo. We have TikTok going, and that's pretty cool as well. Anyway, guys, let's get right into mob slang. Cement shoes, you know. Hey, put them in cement shoes and, you know, kill them in cement shoes. Never heard it in my life. You know, it's, it's a dangerous business, that mob business, and it's legit. But I never heard someone say, let's put them in cement shoes. You know, that was an old Soprano episode, too. They didn't even put them in cement shoes. They wrapped them in chains and dropped them over the over the side of the in a in, in a bag or whatever the hell they dropped them over. Even not just his body. You know, I, I get that's an old saying. You know, it's come from the old, old timers, I guess. But I've never heard the word in actual like the bars I hung out with, the gangsters I hung out with. Oh, let's you know we're gonna put this guy in cement shoes. I heard about some people saying Man, this guy's gonna get whacked. So that 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 cement shoes. I'm gonna give that one a. Really never heard it. I love this one. Fell off the back of a truck. I lived that my whole life. When I say I lived it, I mean I lived it. Fell off the back of the truck means it's all hot. It, it was something that was stolen. And it was legitly, you know, it wasn't, it didn't fall off the back of a truck. It was stolen out of a back of a truck, usually. But they call it, hey, it, was, it fell off a truck. Meaning, hey, it's a hot item. Don't fucking go, uh, you know, back to the store and try to exchange it. You know, I used to get watches, of course, hot. Hot meaning stolen. And I would, you know, say, listen, this fell off a truck. You know, don't go anywhere. Come see me. Meaning if it broke and I gave you a Rolex, don't go to a jeweler because they all have serial numbers on it. And in the serial numbers, they're all registered with Rolex. So don't go to a regular jeweler. Jeweler's going to open up. They're going to see a registered stolen number. And before you know it, the whole shit hits the fan. I mean, you could say I bought it off the street, but still shit's hitting the fan. So if it fell off a truck, and it's funny because, you know, when I grew up, everything fell off a truck. We had a, we had a neighbor used to come by in his trunk, opened the trunk, and had the, you remember the velour sweatsuits back in the 70s? Or socks and underwear and t-shirts. They fell off a truck. You know, my dad would buy the stuff from this guy. It fell, it was hot, and they're selling it, getting rid of it. And everything, I mean, all clothes fell off a truck. So, hot items, you know, TVs, when it fell off a truck. You know, the VCRs back in the day, or DVD players, or whatever it was. Hey, it fell off a truck. You want it? You knew you're getting the best deal in the world because it's stolen and it fell off a truck. Now, when he said fell off a truck, he could have robbed the whole store and that was it. He didn't really rob the truck, but it stopped. it's it's a hot item and it fell off a truck. So that's a total word used. I use that probably every day of my life. Even as a little kid, we knew that word. You know, that's just the way I grew up. We knew that word. That's it. Fell off a truck. Next word, sleeping with the fishes. You know, that's Godfather shit. You know, they come, he throws the bulletproof vest on Abe Vagoda's face, you know, uh, when it, when he picked him up and said, hey, you know, uh, uh, Lugo Brazzi sleeps with the fishes. It's an old Italian thing. If it is or isn't, I don't know. Never heard it. It's a movie thing. Uh, it's not talked about. If someone's gone, they don't talk about where they are. Is that true? I don't know. You know I'm talking about things I heard. That's what makes this real good. These are things that I know personally. Next one, fugazi. I love this word. I use this word, fugazi. A fugazi is a fake. A lot of New Yorkers know what it is. A lot of people around the, around the country do know what it is. It's called, cool. you know, a guy has a, a watch. I probably used it when I did the video about the guy that I robbed and he had a, a bracelet, gold bracelet. But it was a fugazi. It was fake. It was a fake bracelet. So that made me kind of laugh. Uh, doing that one and yeah fugazi is used at least in New York in every bar I was at I don't touch it. it's a fugazi it's no good it's it, it's no good good word fugazi used next one a piece now if someone said hey man you got a piece that means you got a gun and it's a piece to do the work you might be going on a robbery and a guy hey man you got an extra piece I need a piece uh and that is used used it myself a lot of people used it and heard it all the time you got a piece I need a piece got it Good word. A stool pigeon. It's funny. A stool pigeon is just a rat. And a rat is a person who tells on people. You know, it's funny how many stool pigeons or rats there really are. I mean, you find out later in life that the Grim Reaper, which is Greg Scarpa, a real murderer, was a, uh, a fucking stool pigeon for the Fed for 30 years. Whitey Bulger, who got killed in prison. So, you know... Uh, 
I never heard the word stool pigeon. Oh, I heard, man, don't trust him. He's a rat. Oh, he's no good. That's the word. He's, he's no good. That's our word. No good is more of a word than, oh, he's a stool pigeon. Stool pigeon, I think, is out of the movies, out of fucking Humphrey Bogart or some shit like that. But I do get it and uh, understand why people would ask about that word. To earn your button. Earn your button means to be to become a made man. Made man in a mob, it's another one you'll learn, is being inducted officially into the, into the organization of organized crime. It's legit. I've heard that used in the bars, on the streets. You know, one time I heard a guy said, man, he's, he's gonna earn his button. I couldn't, I was an Italian, and uh, you can't you can't be inducted, and I don't know how much all bullshit all that crap is. It, it is what it is. It is a word that I heard, especially back in my day. You know, it, it wasn't rare, they didn't say it around people they didn't know or anything like that, but it could be like somebody you're hanging out with, you know very closely, and they go, man, he's gonna earn his button. And that means he's gonna get made, he's gonna do a piece of work. To earn his button, he might have to do something. Obviously, it's usually a shooting or something like that, a whacking or a killing or something. But there's many people who've been made their butt without killing anybody, so. It's a lot to do with money and stuff like that, but uh, it's a show of loyalty is what it is. Okay, the next word, gumara. Gumar is a word used to this day. It's really an Italian word for uh, girlfriend or girl on the side. She's your gumara. But uh, you heard that back in the day, so that is a word. It's legit. And I give that one still use to this day. A sit down. That for sure is a real thing. It was kind of like I had to have a sit down uh, when I smacked that one guy. It, it's not, it's weird. Usually a sit down is when the boss will come and they'll, and they'll have a sit down with two guys because there's a beef and then they make the decisions. Now, you could lose your cool in a sit down and lose the argument just because you lost your cool. Even though the guy's lying about you, whatever it is. So you got to be upfront. You got to be truthful. Uh, don't do something stupid to warn a suit, sit down and you'll be all right. But it, it is a general used term. Hey man, you gotta have a sit down. And it's usually over money. Like whose territory is this in New York? You know, if you were on 18th Avenue and you're on the wrong side or something of that nature and it was somebody else's area and or is a guy that you're loan shocking money to. Had to have a few of those and you wanna protect them and you need to sit down with somebody, say what's going on, hey. And they make decisions, those decisions are final. It's not like, oh, okay, I wanna peel it. No fucking appeal in that. You're dead if you appeal that. So, yeah, a sit down is a legit one. Whack. I actually heard the word, hey man, that guy's gonna get whacked. He's out of line, he's gonna get whacked. Whack means you're gonna get killed, period. You're gonna get killed. Someone crossed somebody's path that, that wasn't right, and they're gonna kill him, and they're gonna whack him. That is a use, I've heard it used. You know, hey, that, guy, that guy's gonna get whacked, man. He's fucking out of line, man. Who the fuck does he think he is? He's gonna get whacked. Uh, you're not gonna say, oh, he's gonna get shot or he's gonna get killed. No, it's, he's gonna get whacked. So that is a common thing that, that was used around me and people a lot. I use that word. Kick up. Well, kick up is an important word for guys like me because I had to kick up. You kick up to the people above you to get the protection you need or to show the respect you need to show so you don't get, you know, uh, kidnapped or, or stolen from. You know, everybody asks me, Larry, why did you have to give anybody money? Well, Here's why, because when I did something and they knew what I did, and if all the other criminals and families knew I was a, a, a big time robber, what do you think they would do? They would take Larry hostage. And guess what? Larry's gonna give them whatever the fuck they want, because if they got me, I know I gotta give it up. But they couldn't do that, one, if I was connected or I was associated with a different family, which I was. So it was they couldn't just take me and say, oh, let's get this guy. Because then they have to deal with the people who are losing their money. Because I'm kicking up. Kicking up. Giving my penance, my uh, uh, respect up the chain of command. And that's why the actual system of the mob worked. Or even organized crime worked. Because it went up, yes. But the power went down to protect the people below it as well. But you had a guy that they knew that this guy, you fuck with this guy, he's gonna whack your fucking family, let's say. You're gonna mess with him? So now this guy's protecting Larry. You're gonna fuck with Larry if this guy might fucking fuck with your family? You ain't doing that. Now I couldn't be like that, so oh, I'm gonna kill your family, because they just get you and that's it. You gotta have that kind of juice and that kind of respect on the streets. I had a lot of respect on the streets and nobody would fuck with me because I was connected. And I was associated. But I always kicked up and I never screwed them. You know, you, you, could, you could kick up and screw somebody and think, oh, okay, I can get away, give them less. Why would I do that? 
Why would I want him to ever find out my boss that I gave him less? Even though he probably wouldn't have found out. But why would I do that? Why would I chance that? I'd be an idiot. And I'm alive because I'm not an idiot. A zip. You know, I don't know if it's derogatory or not. The zips were the, the guys who were coming from Italy. And they would come here. They couldn't speak much English. Now, those zips were crazy. I, <laughs> I had a guy who was at my wedding. Bruno. He was a zip. Now, Bruno would fucking shoot you if fucking Willie told him to shoot you. Just shoot you in the middle of nowhere. Wouldn't give a fuck if a cop was right next to him. He was a zip. And it was so funny because those zips were crazy. He used to come. I, I go, laddie, I love me. He used to take me into his apartment and show me all his guns with the taped handles and all this. He was a fucking crazy motherfucker. He was at my wedding in a leisure suit. And, uh, you know, I had a friend dancing. And he goes, laddie, laddie, you want me to take care of him? He wants to kill the guy at my wedding. What the fucking crazy zip? But a zip is that that that's a person who comes from Italy in the mob, and uh, so that that's what they, the word zip is. And you know, oh man, he's like, like first generation off the boat, barely speak English, and and they're trying, and and they're crazy. They come here, they don't really know the place. They usually got to come under somebody. It ain't just coming here to try to run things. That ain't gonna work. Couldn't even speak the language. How the fuck that gonna work? So they're gonna come here and work under somebody. Another phrase, cook the books. Cook the books is a definite phrase, not even in the mob. Cooking the books is having uh, uh, usually two sets of books, having fake numbers for accounting purposes. Whether it's for a partner or another, another person who might be a partner and you don't want them to know something, they cook the books and they show him. Or usually for the government, obviously they cook the books. So that is a phrase and it is used today. Next word, connected. You know, it's, it's a very just blonde word. It's a good word. Uh, we would be out in a bar uh, somewhere, maybe on 3rd Avenue in Brooklyn or uh, at a club or something. Yeah, he's connected. The owner of that place is, you know, he's connected. Connected mean he is connected with usually a specific family. You could be connected with multiple families. A guy who's very good with all the guys and he's not associated with a specific family. He's connected because he has a lot of very connected friends that are going to stick up for him or you can't fuck with him like a lot of the jewelry stores were connected in new york so they they had connections with specific people and specific families and you couldn't fuck with them so i never robbed in new york uh so connected is a word it is your word used on the streets in the mob life make your bones you know make your bones is something and it means you know to do something to become a made man you have to do something whether it's whack somebody or do whatever you're gonna do i actually never heard that word used like that i know what it is oh he he went and made his bones i didn't hear that i know people say you know he had to go do a piece of work or something like that I had to take care of something you know he's, he's gonna be made or you have to do something. i didn't say oh he's gonna go make his bones it is totally something that I would know, I'm sure is used. It wasn't really, I didn't hear it personally in that regard, but I, I get the word. So, I mean, it's a good one and I totally get it. Next one is a fall guy. Who's going to take the rap? It, it, you know, you could even be three guys, four guys, friends, partners, whatever. And one of you guys will say, hey, listen, if something goes down, I'll be the fall guy. He'll take the rap for everybody else. He's the fall guy. There's guys who have not done the crime and they're the fall guy, and they get paid and taken care of, stuff like that. So fall guy is a word, and it is used, and I heard it used myself. So yes, that's another one that's used. Vig. Now, vig is even just used to this day in Vegas. The vig is the interest on a bet. Let's say you place a bet, a $100 bet. It costs you $10 to place that bet. It's called the vig. Now, the bookie takes 100 on this team, 100 on this team, one pays the other, he wins the vig. They both put up $110. Now he gives one guy his 110 back and 100. Now the bookie's laying here with $10 in his hand. That's the vig. That's the juice. That's the interest it costs to make a bet. Now it happens to this day in Vegas and everywhere else, legit or not, it's the vig or vigorish. And they call it the vig. Totally legit. Used every day. I use it every day. I probably still use it. I mean, what's the vig on that? Meaning, what's the interest on that? That's just a word that, that is used. Very common word. Next word, associate. That was me. So it's totally used. You, you're associated with this family. To be associated with that family, that means people know who you're with. And if you're associated with that family, usually, especially if you're an earner or doing something, that family's going to protect you. 
Now, you're not a made guy. Whole different thing. But to be an associate is good, too. It's a lot of the hang arounds. There's a lot of guys who are associates that are just very close with people, very uh, uh, protected, maybe doing a little, little skimming, getting jobs for somebody in the uh, construction industry or something like that. And he's going to be associated with that family. So that is another word. Totally, absolute, legit word. Last one, he's a piece of work. That's just an every fucking day saying. I don't think that has anything to do with the mob or, or New York or anywhere, to be honest with you. This, that guy's a piece of work. I mean, he's a, he's a fucking whack job or what a piece of work this fucking guy is. What, what an idiot. What did he do? What a fucking piece of work. Holy shit, this fucking moron's a piece of work. Meaning, you know, holy shit, you, you're not the sharpest tool in the shed. And uh, sometimes you'd laugh, what a fucking piece of work this fucking guy is. You know, that's what you'd say. I mean, it, it, it was used, and I don't think that's even a mob saying. I think it's everything saying. Obviously, I don't want anybody to have to live that life. I'd rather you uh, email me and ask me about those words. Don't get involved. You know, I get a lot of emails from you guys. I got a great email from a young man in Canada, in Vancouver. You'll know who you are, and I'm glad you didn't rob. I'm glad you didn't do all that after watching what I did. Even right down when you were casing it. Get out of that shit. Hard times make make good people better. Hard times make you uh, uh, appreciate the good times even more. I wish I had somebody like myself mentoring me that way. But I'm glad you watch videos. I'm glad you listen to what I'm doing. Because I'm not bullshitting you. I'm not here to bullshit you. I'm here to tell, tell you the facts and the truth. And you guys know that. Make good choices, everybody, please. Make good choices. Don't be stupid. I mean, you know, life is too short. Enjoy it. Have fun. Help somebody. Make one good choice a day. Open a door for an old lady. Carry a package. Be nice to somebody. And trust me, it'll come back to you. Have a great day, everybody. Please, if you like us, subscribe. Check out my playlist. Check out everything we're doing. You'll have a good time on this channel. Have a great day, everybody. Stay strong, stay safe. Have a good day.